It is our top story tonight. Governor Gretchen Whitmer rolling out her vision for 2024 during her sixth State of the State address. Affordable housing, affordable education, and helping small businesses succeed among the governor's goals for this year and beyond. First, on the subject of affordable housing. The governor pushing for expanded housing, or in her words, build baby build. We will invest almost $1.4 billion to build or rehabilitate nearly 10,000 homes. That's 10 times what we put into housing just 10 years ago. Getting this done will support thousands of good paying middle class jobs in the skilled trades from pipe fitters and carpenters to bricklayers and roofers. Let's get it done. Housing is... Another major topic tonight, education. The governor wants to move up a plan to provide free pre-K for every four-year-old from the end of 2026 to the end of this year. When we get this done, no matter who you are or where you come from or how much you make, your child can enroll in pre-K and be set up for success. So let this be a message to parents in other states. Come to Michigan. We got your back every step of the way, and we'll save you 10 grand on your children's education. On the other end, the governor also proposing expanding free community college education for those just 21 and older to every high school graduate. As Michiganders pursue an associate's degree or skills certificate at a community college, they can save an average of $4,000 on tuition. This is a transformational opportunity for graduating seniors and will help us achieve our 60 by 30 goal, having 60% of our adult population with post-secondary skills, training, or a degree by 2030. The governor also pushing plans to help small businesses. Whitmer proposing an R&D tax credit and more Renaissance zones that she says would drive investment and create local jobs. Whitmer also wants to establish a new innovation fund to create startups in the state. Our current toolkit limits our ability to attract small and second stage businesses. So let's start the Higher Michigan Fund to lower overall payroll taxes for these firms. The value here is simple. The more you hire in Michigan, the more you should save in Michigan. We had a similar bipartisan program years ago that worked well. Let's bring it back because, well, everyone loves a throwback, right? Just a snippet of the governor's address tonight at the Capitol and News 8 political reporter Rick Albin getting reaction from both sides of the aisle to this year's State of the State. And he's live with more tonight. Rick. Well, Brian, the governor's speech was well received by Democrats. Republicans sat on their hands when she talked about more housing and free college and free free school and more. But despite the fact that Republicans were not particularly enthusiastic, the governor laid out an aggressive agenda, though it didn't have the same kind of big social priorities or the change of plans or reversal of previous policies that last year's speech led to. That's primarily because many of those things were taken care of in 2023. But we did get reaction, and it was predictable along party lines. First, Democrats. There was a fair amount of lack of enthusiasm from Republicans. You're correct about the lack of enthusiasm from Republicans. They didn't even stand up and clap when it came to the lion's grit being noted. But uh, it was an interesting theme. It was a theme in which... The governor started out with the greatest hits of 2023 compilation. Well, Rick, as we say often, we've got 40 years of work to do, a lot of pent up legislation and a lot of opportunities, not just to hit those top points, but to dig deeper. There are so many uh, issues that the governor brought up tonight uh, and proposals that she has that I think is going to make Michigan an even more attractive place to live. Between one time dollars and a healthy economy, I think we're in a good position to fund a lot of really important initiatives that will help families succeed in Michigan. There are plenty of things that I know there's some common ground on, and maybe the Republicans were a little bit shy tonight, but we're going to keep trying. Hopefully they'll come to the table. Then, no, Republicans. More Something that's really common is uh, Republicans and Democrats have a tendency to see the same problems with our state and the same challenges that face our state. Uh, unfortunately, we have vastly different ways to solve them. You know, a lot of it, I would say, is 
free, 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 but the reality is somebody has to pay for free. Um, there was, I think, a miscalculation when you look at the data about, and I'm an analyst, so when you look at the data and say, how are we doing in the state of Michigan? You know, Crane's newspaper this week had a story that says, look, Michigan's among the worst for moves out by U-Haul. Uh, when you look at their rankings, our, our income earnings are number 39th now. This puts us close to Mississippi. So if you want to address people moving out of state, you know, maybe it's the cost of government regulation, and I didn't hear any of that in, in her speech. So I think that's what we need to do a bigger, deeper dive into. Why do people leave this state? I think it's the cost of government. It's too big. She's talking about all the, the benefits and the inflation and how to help families. The best way to have done that was allow the tax rollback to go into place. So now it's not necessarily unusual for the minority party uh, to not be terribly enthused about a state of the state speech. But I have to say during tonight's speech, the division between Republicans and Democrats was really highlighted more than I have seen it in some time. Nonetheless, fact remains that Democrats can pass pr practically anything they want to, or at least they will be able to as soon as two vacancies in the House are filled, giving them back a majority there. If if those two seats, as expected, are won by Democrats. Question that many Republicans had is how will the governor pay for all of these new plans? And we'll find out more about that in early February when she lays out her budget recommendations. And until then, we'll keep an eye on the legislature and find out if they prioritize any of the things that the governor talked about tonight. If you didn't see the speech or if you'd like to see parts of it again, it's available right now at woodtv.com. I'm live in Lansing, Rick Albin, News 8. All right, Rick, yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, in the days that follow some of these initiatives as they roll out, and as you said, the search for some of that money. Rick Albin, live from the Capitol tonight. Thank you.